Grace has impressed me as a, a person who's uh, made a, a, a start in, in inroads to being a jazz singer in the Upper Valley, which uh, maybe when you were growing up, Teo, and when I was uh, first moved here, that would have been impossible. There, were, there weren't enough uh, places to play, and there weren't enough players. And I used to say, sometimes I think in, in my bookstore, there's, uh, how can anybody do this? No one can make a living doing this. No one, there's not enough opportunity. And then somebody shows up and does it. So I've been uh, impressed by by the Grace doing that, and then wanting to uh, get to know her and think how uh, yeah how she's managing this. And so I think maybe a good beginning of all this is to start with like the straight interviewer type of question, like uh, like where where are you from and uh, how did, what were uh, Maybe in answering that question, like what were some of your early experiences uh, in music, or or were there any that that uh, stick out in your in your memory? Yeah, of course. Well, um, you know, thank you so much for having me, and it's yeah. such a pleasure. So, a uh, real honor for me to to be involved. So, um, yeah. so I was born and raised in uh, Worcestershire, England, Worcestershire. Okay. which is uh, about two hours northwest of London, and I was the youngest of five. Um, so I grew up just kind of observing everything, very influenced by my siblings and um, mm -hmm. in terms of music, the music they were into and my parents. So music was always a very big part of our lives mm -hmm. um, and, and very varied of the influences of, of what everyone was into, yeah. very different. Yeah. And so I just grew up hearing lots of different music, but never jazz. Were no your one was family into jazz. Uh, performers, or were they just sing around the house kind of? Uh, yes, my mum. She was a um, a very gifted um, singer, still is, um, yeah. and guitarist. And she was in various bands. Um, yeah. One of them, they were on the radio and made um, tapes. They were called Seventh Heaven, yeah. um, and she performed at all the American Air Force bases in the UK. Right. Um, and, and did you I, go to some of those performances when you were little? Uh, no, these were pre me. These were before oh, okay. my time. I see. Um, and and my brother, he's a professional singer and musician, mm. um, trumpet player, guitarist, pianist, um, in England. Oh. So um, so so I just grew up very um, just very aware of music. That was definitely the the mm. focus of our family. And my mother also has family in. Ireland, who yeah. um, there were lots of uh, players in, in the family yeah. there too. Um, so we, we heard a lot of Irish folk music growing up. Did you have sort of a family band in any sense ever? Or I was mean, it... um, we would play a lot together, yeah. especially my brother and I. Um, he's yeah. next up from me, we're only 18 months apart, so we would yeah. play together a lot. Um, yeah. But um, so you know, when I was nine is when I really um, fell in love with uh, classical music. That's uh -huh. my dad, and he would play a lot of that, and I loved The Moonlight by Beethoven. Oh, and so that's, that's I decided, good for a nine year old. Yeah, yeah I decided yeah, I yeah. had to learn that piece. Yeah. And so I started playing by ear um, the piano yeah. at, at nine, and then my parents arranged for me to begin classical piano lessons at 11. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and I 
kind of really just loved it, threw myself into it, and I took on flute as well. So I, I studied both classical flute and piano for all through high school and my formative years, um, which I loved. And I think I really appreciate that classical foundation in my life, um, you know, for, for all the theory and, and yeah. just many things. Um, but the curriculum was very strict. And so even though I was meeting other musicians and uh, hearing other types of music that I would love to learn, like jazz or blues, um, they wanted me to kind of stick to the curriculum I was in. So I never really had the opportunity to learn much else other than um, classical at that time. Did you have the opportunity to hear any jazz players as a young person? In, um, I mean, in person or in, in concert or no, in, no. You know, I just I don't know. I just it was mostly through recordings that you. Yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. know anyone who was, you know, yeah. involved with that or where I could go. I mean, we're talking. Yeah. I was still, you know, in high school and. Um, Did you go to classical concerts sometimes, or were there classical concerts that you could go to? Um, I would play in a lot of of concerts myself, um, yeah. but but no, I didn't get the opportunity to go to too many. Um, but I did make a friend yeah. who later became a, a tutor and mentor for me. Um, and he was a professional jazz musician. And so he, he kind of took me under his wing and, and helped me in a, in a, in uh -huh. a great way. Um, and that kind of really um, spurred my love for jazz. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, I really didn't get involved in it too, too yeah. much until, you know, just recently. So you came to the States. Ago, yeah. I came to the States, yeah. So your early lessons, so you, we got, Training and and you did you sing in, when you were a teenager? I um I was in uh, yeah. choirs and um and I was in one youth band, but I never saw myself as a singer. Yeah. I always saw myself as a pianist, um and you yeah. know flautist. But um so I never sang seriously at all. So it sounds like you had a a, a background in formal training and your family was really influential, and uh, but maybe. Uh, wasn't really formative for you. You really had a, a, an, an idea of your own or you're developing an idea of I, your own. I think yeah. so. I think, um, like I said, I had a wonderful foundation, um, yeah. but I really was still searching and still reaching for for what was my, my kind yeah. of niche for a long time. Have you thought of, uh, this is a hard question, of wh whether, um, like, did, like, realizing I... I am a singer, or I, I want to be a singer. Was there a, a time when that was a conscious thing, or did you just find yourself, I'm singing all the time? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was four years ago yeah. when I got involved with um, Interplay Jazz and Arts okay. that uh, Fred Haas and Sabrina Brown yeah. um, founded. And I attended yeah. uh, one of their very first jam sessions for me was um, 2018. And I came with um, this piano piece I was going to play. Oh. Um, and it was, oh. you know, five pages of sheet music oh. that I was going to play. And it was The Nearness of You. Oh, that I right. really loved, and um, and so I brought it, and you know, the whole it was a big group of musicians. It was just piano, and, not singing. Uh, I, I was going to sing it, okay. but um, but you play it also. Playing was kind of the focus, yeah. Yeah. and and so the other musicians who were there, they took one look at these five pages, and they thought, you know, why don't we play it and yeah. you sing it? Yeah. And I thought, well. I'm a pianist, I'm here uh, to play the piano, you yeah. know, and I'm just going to sing it so that, you know, you have some kind of melody. Yeah. Um, and and he was like, no, no, just try it, um, yeah. one of the gentlemen there. And so I did. Uh -huh. And so I, it was my first experience of singing with this big group of people playing and accompanying me. Uh -huh. And it's like something just clicked and I just absolutely fell in love with it. Um, it was yeah. a very special moment for me. and. Since that moment is when I decided, okay, I'm going Isn't to that's explore. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm going to explore singing and yeah. see what happens. So that was that was four years ago. That kind of set me on my journey. No, that's fantastic that that opportunity occurred and you were ready to to do it. I guess since um, since that since that time and you started to sing, um, did you feel like it was the people at Interplay that gave you the direction, or did you feel like you had once you started, did you feel like, oh, I, I know just the kind of music I want to do and I, how I want to do it? Or do you think I've got to, I want to be like somebody or, or I should take um, some lessons or something? Yeah. I think 
the people that interplay, Fred and uh, many of the members, you know, Billy Rosen, yeah. um, were extremely instrumental in, in helping me find my way. Yeah. Um, how I kind of went on from there is they would allow me to come to their gigs and let me sit in for, you know, a tune or two. And uh, they did that for me a lot yeah. where I could get the opportunity to, um, to, to get yeah. some experience. And, and then from there, as I kind of grew and built my repertoire, um, they would, you know, give me opportunities for gigs. So then I was able to actually book, um, book yeah. gigs with them. And I would say um, lots of people um, helped to guide me and um, give me their input. And I, I think that that is um, absolutely crucial for helping me. Um, become a, mm. a, a singer is so many people who took the time with me and the opportunity like yourself mm. um, to teach me and give me yeah. um, advice and input and, and knowledge that I could use um, I really uh, just have had yeah. so many people who've done that for me and I'm, it, um, it does seem and one of the uh, nice things is that um, it, it seems like uh, I was impressed by that when I met you that a lot of the people that you were learning, uh, you knew a lot of people and were learning from everybody. And it wasn't, uh, you were, were, it seemed like you, you found something, including in me, that uh, something that you enjoyed and uh, could get some benefit from. And that's, uh, that speaks really well of, of, of you. And it's a good model for human behavior, you know, really that you can, that you can pick up on, uh, that people do have different things to offer. And you can, it's great to be able to be in a position to, you know, accept that. Where, once you started singing, or even now, are there, um, or maybe did the people in Interplay play, or, or some of the people like me say, like, you should hear this person? And there was a, is there, uh, are there three or four or two, or, or is there anybody that stands out in your mind as a either an instrumentalist or a singer or a male or female that you uh, still think I want to listen more to them and be like them? Uh, at least a little bit, or, or anything else. Absolutely. I think um, that yeah. so many people would say, oh, you should listen to this person or that person. Yeah. And sometimes I would listen and they weren't quite for me. Yeah. And then other times they were really extremely valuable. And um, I think yeah. I, I probably in my own time listen equally to instrumentalists just as much as, as vocalists. Yeah. Um, there are so many instrumentalists that I love, like Hank yeah. Mobley. Um, and Coltrane and Monk and just so many of the legends that inspire me in, in so many mm. ways and, and I think help, just help to develop even as a singer, even just from hearing that. Did you have a lot of that background already? Like, like uh, and when you came to the, the United States, even like you knew Louis Armstrong and John Coltrane or Billie Holiday, you heard of all those people? I mean, people. not in depth, no, not yeah. really. It's really in the past four years that I've thrown myself yeah. into just uh, learning as much as I possibly can. I think in terms yeah. of, um, you know, the greats, I was yeah. obviously very influenced by you know, Ella Fitzgerald, yeah. Billie Holiday, Sarah Vaughan, Judy London. Um, and then most recently, my favorite vocalists are Lucy Yagzarian, uh, Suri Lemme, yeah. and uh, Eva Cassidy was also a really big um, inspiration for me. Yeah, that's great. Um, I guess, um, let's see, the, the, I guess uh, thinking about what you've been doing already, and, and I, I, from what I know, I, you, you, you play and sing very often, maybe. As much as two or three times a week in the summertime, maybe even more, and and it's uh, since thinking about that and thinking about the trajectory of your young career, what uh, is that kind of how you're looking? Do you see that being just don't want to do more? Uh, do you th can you imagine the, um, uh, a next step, or do you, do you think about things like what's my next step? Maybe you don't even think about that. Yeah. I, I do, I do. I'm very yeah. much a, a planner and a goal orientated person, so I, I do think about the future a lot. Um, yeah. 
the tricky thing is I do have a day job that I really yeah. love a lot. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Um, and <coughs> so yeah. at the moment, my plan is to keep that and to just try and do all yeah. the musical engagements as well. There were some weeks this summer that were really hard. Yeah. I had, I think, one week I had five yeah. gigs and then worked full time uh, at my day job as well. Yeah. So that was tough. Um, but I, I think I think it's important for me at the moment to have both. I think yeah. giving up my day job, I would get concerned that singing might um, not, yeah. lose its joy maybe, or if it's now suddenly my main income, would it be an uphill battle the whole way, trying yeah. to get enough work, trying to get enough um, gigs, you know? So I think for now, I, I'm just taking each opportunity that's that's presented to me and I weigh it yeah. out and, and see if it's It seems like you're doing right it in a me. very nice way. I, I have a, a friend who's a classical pianist who asked me recently if he was, could he uh, do a bookstore concert? And and I asked him, I hadn't seen him for a while, and he's, uh, I think he's in North Carolina, and he and he became, he, he was a concert player and he played uh, French music especially, like Ravel and Cooper and Debussy, and, and he, uh, he just became dis disaffected with uh, the concert life and didn't have enough gigs and didn't and felt uh, like it wasn't this expressive enough for him, and he was uh, he so he uh, became a nurse, and he's uh, but now he he asked me again to play. He said just because I became a nurse became a nurse, it didn't mean that I gave up my love for the music. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know that I, I'm still. Uh, so he he plays every chance that he can can get, and he so he was happy to. So I, I think it's. Sometimes it's what the you know life's economic realities force us into those decisions, and yes. sometimes you you make a leap and you decide this or that, you know, and yes. or the, where there's the room for a full time. And I know you've been playing more outside of the Upper Valley, and uh, at least I've read about that. You were in Portsmouth and then yes. somewhere uh, this else. This year, I was um, your circle of. I was fortunate enough to meet um, a group of musicians based over at um, UNH, so the faculty, the jazz yeah. department faculty over there. Um, mm. Amazing uh, people and musicians, and they mm. invited me um, to do some some gigs with them on the seacoast. And we did um, we did some in Maine and um, the seacoast, New Hampshire, and then I got some yeah. other gigs from that and was able to perform in some places in Massachusetts that were just, was such yeah. a pleasure. And then through doing that, I was able to meet so many new musicians who oh, just, great. each one has a new way of doing things, yeah. a bit of a, maybe a different style. And so I yeah. just got to learn so much um, through having experience to, to know them and sing with them. And it was yeah. very, um, it's almost like um, it, it really just, pushed me and caused me to, to really work um, harder than I ever have, you know, and caused me to step up a level, you know, with my own, with, with everything, my own um, performance. And so it was very, very good for me, um, a wonderful experience. So, so yes, and hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully things, that will continue. You don't know where things will lead. <laughs> and like, and being, it sounds like you're, like you're open to wherever, when things come up, you're, yeah, absolutely. you're uh, mm -hmm. of ready to, meet the unexpected happily yeah the uh i was going to ask another question a little bit different there's a, a, a when i was thinking about doing this interview i thought one of my favorite interviews that uh that i've ever heard is uh or read is art taylor the uh drummer who played with miles davis and with, with john coltrane and all the people sonny rollins and he did a, a book called notes and tones where he interviewed his his friends these great players and he asked them all a question. He asked them all two questions, and, and, compare, and you're reading them, you compare their answers. And he asked one of the questions was, "What do you think of the word jazz?" So I, I thought, uh, and everybody had something different to say. And I thought that uh, I would ask you, have you ever have you thought about the the word, or is it am I asking you bring up a, something you'd never thought about, or is it? Or is it all, all? For me, it's sometimes it's, it's, people say, "What kind of music do you play?" And I don't necessarily want to say jazz because I think people have misconceptions or, or different conceptions. Sure. So, what do you th what do you think about that word? Uh, uh, it, or well, do you use that word? I do, I do, and I think yeah. for me, what is jazz? <coughs> what makes jazz different than all the other genres? And I yeah. think for me, 
it's um, mm. it's a genre of music that is focused around being in the moment and being creative in the moment. Um, I think mm. that it's it's about creative yeah. freedom to be able to improvise and and it has to be um, something that you're present for because if you're not present in every way um, yeah. you, there are very special things that you could miss yeah. um, I love the fact that in jazz you know we have music that we yeah. that we go by but there's also this opportunity to, to use that to springboard into something totally new and, and then all of you in the band are creating something new yeah. together. And so it's very demanding, really, because in the moment, mm -hmm. you're having to be aware and listening and communicating with everyone yeah. um, as you go on this new journey together. Yeah. Um, but it's it's very, very special, I think. I think you're right. And I think um, I heard Bill Evans one time say that uh, uh, in, in classical music, you have uh, one minute of music uh, might it you don't know it might have taken um, three years to write that one music one minute of music or to prepare it or it might take three weeks or but in 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 jazz the uh, three minutes of music take three minutes yeah. and that's a that uh, sounds like that's uh, the way to and it is a uh, one of the unique and uh, terrific elements of, of the music how about the, another question that art that's a good answer that art art taylor asked everybody and th this was in the 19 I think it was 19, early 1970s or 60s that he asked this question, and so it's not so relevant today, but maybe we can change the question a little bit. He asked everybody what they thought of the Beatles, and the Beatles were um, dominating the music market, and everybody uh, was talking about them. And, and um, did the Beatles uh, figure in your life in any way, or do you uh, listen to, that, to, the, to the Beatles? Or, or a broader question, if in case you didn't, uh, what uh, when you think of people like pop, the pop music of today, uh, does that influence you in a way, or do you? How do you think of that? Is there a divide between jazz and a pop singer is over here and a jazz singer is over here? And, yeah. Right, I can comment on the the Beatles. Uh, my father was a die-hard Beatles fan, okay. and so we heard yeah. them a lot. We had yeah. many tapes in the car. Yeah. that we would listen to on family journeys and yeah. so for me it is a very um, nostalgic uh, thing to hear them yeah. um, and uh, in, in one choir I was in growing up we did a Beatles tribute where we did a medley of about 30 yeah. Beatles tunes from you know one into the other that was wonderful and I enjoyed yeah. it um, but I think it's not necessarily the soundtrack of my life yeah. Um, in a way that I can connect with deeply, but I greatly, obviously, appreciate them and their skill yeah. and their, um, you know, their artistry and appreciate yeah. that in a huge way. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, I have done gigs where I've thrown in a Beatles tune here and there um, that can yeah. be really fun for people, yeah. you know, to hear, hear a, yeah. a tune just totally different from just jazz standards. So I think it can add a really nice variation into a set. Pop music today, again, I can appreciate the artistry mm. and um, people's skill. It's not necessarily something I love, um, but I think there's many cross genres now where people are yeah. marrying yeah. the two together, and I think that can be really creative yeah. and really fun. And so I appreciate that too, um, even if pop music today may not be something that um, yeah. that moves me. I think of some people uh, those when I was. Thinking about these questions, I thought of uh, Nat King Cole, who's very one of the great jazz singer. But it's very, very much did a lot of he, people thought of him as a pop singer because he recorded any anything, mm -hmm. and he could carry it off. And it didn't. And there, there are other singers, like maybe Louis Armstrong for a period was like like that too. Mm -hmm. And it's um, so that's uh, or do you so do you do you think about that when how you're, I'm going to present myself or say I'm really a jazz singer or I. Or I don't, do you think about those things or have you decided that you're something? Yeah. Yes, I, I actually get a lot of requests um, to sing, you know, more pop, uh, modern day pop oh. tunes. And, um, and mm. I, I, I will, you know, if, if someone hires me for a gig and that's what they want, I will do that. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I do get reminded that at the end of the day, 
who I am is I, yeah. I personally feel like my voice seems yeah. more um, you well, know, I've admired that jazz. about here and when I've heard you sing and, and that uh, it seems like you're creating your own persona you're not always at least I haven't heard you in, in a gig where you have to do a certain thing you know, where the people hire you, we want you to do only Beatles tunes or sure, you know, sure. the, our covers. And I, I yeah. think if they do, um, yeah. like I, I have done a lot of um, Great Gatsby, um, you know, 1920s oh, yeah. speakeasy era gigs yeah. where it's just that. And yeah. I, I, I think it's a very good learning experience and, and yeah. very a good challenge to, to yeah. just focus on that or have to learn that repertoire only, you know. So I do think it's worth the the, um, the time and effort um, but I think at that point you do always have to balance out you know I do have the time yeah. and the energy and the dedication to learn all we do have to pay attention well. to what people want to an extent yes, yeah yes yeah. And, and I think yeah. it adds um, it, it creates a more versatile you know that, that your own portfolio can be very varied and, and versatile so I think that that, that um, aids anyone any artist I thought uh, Another thing I've thought about, uh, like a general question that's um, about the history of music in the United States is uh, I've, in jazz or American music, uh, uh, singers have often led the way. And, and it's, um, I'm thinking of uh, Bessie Smith and Blues and, and Ma Rainey. They were the most famous recording artists of their day. And then in, in jazz, um, Louis Armstrong, you know, he start, sort of became uh, the, first, the first jazz singer, and he worked with Betsy Smith at different times. So they were, in a way, the uh, singers, um, the role of the singer has changed in the history of music. And, it, and, and in that early sense, that was, sort of, that was what everybody wanted to hear mm -hmm. when the re record industry began. The singers was, and, and in a way, that's still true. The people and the... Uh, and I guess a, a side part of that question is that um, the role of, of women in, in, as singers in jazz. I wondered if, if, I could, if you've reflected on, you know, on the, how the development of um, singing in the history of jazz and the role of, uh, of, uh, of singers, of women singers in particular, or, or singers in general. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When I, first, um, when I first got okay. involved with jazz, I decided to just read absolutely everything I possibly could about yeah. the history and um, just to educate yeah. myself. And so I read some superb books, you know, um, different biographies and what have yeah. you. But one of the books that really opened my eyes was The Jazz Standards by Ted Goya. Was what was it? Yeah. His, his last name is G-I-O-I-A. Oh, okay. Ted. I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. And so it yeah. goes through each... Uh, he picks 100 of the most commonly played jazz standards yeah. and he goes through each of who the composer was, why yeah. it was written, when it was written in the background of the tune. Yeah. And that book really opened my eyes as to just how many female composers um, there were yeah. that were not given the credit at the time that it was written. Yeah. You know, not just because of um, their nationality or where they were from, but because they were women. Yeah. And so, of course, as well, in reading about jazz and the history of jazz, you get to read about yeah. just the racial discrimination that so many of the great jazz musicians went through. And then now reading about the women, too, that they, so many of them went through yeah. that and the discrimination because they were women, too. So um, yeah. I think I'm very aware of that now and very conscious of that. Yeah. Um, and so I wouldn't say that it influences um, maybe my, my repertoire in a huge way because I, I try to base my repertoire on what moves me, you know. But I think mm. it's more than anything changed my heart and my attitude towards what I am able mm. to do, what I'm fortunate enough in this day and age as a woman to be able to do, and that's make music and I get to be, you know, taken seriously yeah. even though... Um, you know, and I, I think about what these women went through yeah. and how maybe they didn't get that. And so I'm extremely grateful. That's a good um, way to put it. That, yeah, that's, yeah, that's how I, it's I think that I've say. heard a, f a friend uh, recently in a conversation said something about the, uh, that the singing was kind of a ghetto for women jazz artists. Like that there were very few uh, 
opportunities for a trombonist or a saxophonist uh, to play. And like it usually, it was always a, a singer with a band, and it'd be the, uh, the it'd be a bus full of jazz guys, and and, a, and one woman who's, who sang with them. But in the way she was the um, very much like if without her that wouldn't happen. Right, true. You yeah. know, she really carried and gave weight Space. to the whole thing. Yeah. And I, I guess um, in some ways that, that hasn't changed at all. And in some ways it, it's changed a lot. And I think that women are taken more seriously as. And I wondered if that. Uh, and I, I've noticed that, that some of the best young players, on, uh, singers and uh, instrumentalists, are female. And uh, it seems um, it's something like you say, what's happened over the last 25 years? I would say that, I would definitely say that. Do, do you feel uh, that, that, that like in any way that, or you disagree with that, or if that's like you're part of a, a movement, or do you care about that, or is that I care just greatly happy? about it, absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, would you say that there's mm. more female musicians and singers now, or that there's always been a lot? you know, within jazz, but right. maybe now the culture and the, our we'll society is changing yeah. in a way that they, they're they yeah. more acknowledging that and giving women yeah. more credit, you know, and I think that's probably more the case yeah. is what's happening. Yeah, I think that uh, like in high school bands across the country, uh, it was usually, or in grade school bands, the, the girls would always take the flute or something like that, but now they're, okay. they're, it's not always the same, you know, right. it's changing. A, a little bit, and it's. I think they're saving the idiom. That's what I like to do. So I'm uh, grateful and happy about it, really. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, I guess um, I would say, and, and maybe I don't know if you need to comment on it, but thinking about uh, the, the jazz came, you know, so called jazz, American casual music, uh, <coughs> was a, a product of. of of black people at a particular time, mostly, and out of the American South, and, and but it's long ago transcended its roots. Mm -hmm. That it's not, um, it can be played by anybody. And it uh, and that's really what's making a big difference today, I guess. Uh, I, I noticed uh, too about um, it, the people who used to populate classical orchestras were uh, Italians and Jewish. And now they're, uh, Korean or the Asian, and uh, and there it's, it's both male and female, and I guess uh, oh I think all I can say is uh, I'm happy about about that. And I'm glad that somebody's digging into all these traditions, and then keeping it keep them alive. And, and I guess you probably would kind of are with I, me on I that. I totally agree. I yeah. think yeah. it shows just how um, yeah. just how much anyone can can play jazz today. When yeah. you look at me, you know, I'm from England, yeah. Yeah. not even where jazz originated, but where it has There are not so many famous influence. British players. No. <laughs> there are some. But <laughs> and yet yeah. I get to, you know, yeah. enjoy it and sing it and, and people, it, yeah. Yeah, I'm fortunate enough to, to yeah. be given opportunities to do it. So yeah. I, I completely agree with you there. Yeah. Well, and, uh, I want to take a breath and ask a different kind of a question. Um, about uh, I think the relationship between uh, singing a song and and acting in a play, and uh, sometimes when uh, I've heard you do a song, you do a song that I, I've thought, how can she sing that? And it's uh, like the lyrics are uh, they're not out of your time and personality, mm -hmm. but you you do. I was thinking like the song Black Coffee, mm -hmm. or, or the, there's definitely others, or maybe romantic songs, or, or things that, uh, or things that, like some song from, say, have you had an experience that's like that? And so how do you, do you, um, do you just sing, sing them and, and let, sometimes when I play piano, I, I don't think about anything, I just play. And then sometimes I, I do think about it, you know, and I wondered if, if, if you have a regular habit <coughs> of, uh, I think when talking about it, I. I thought about the, uh, <clears throat> in acting there's a Stanislavski method where you enter in the role of the character and you become that person. And, uh, and I read that Youssef Latif, a, a flute player, a saxophonist, he, he, uh, he wrote and said that, that he practiced that. that. He put himself in the role of a suffering individual and, and tried to project that. Mm -hmm. And do you uh, 
have you thought about that sort of thing, or do you do that all the time? Or, um, or no? I, I, you really asked so many questions in that. Um, <laughs> so, I, I think I'll yeah. say that sometimes there are uh, tunes that the lyrics make me uncomfortable, and so I try to be very true to my own conviction yeah. in that. And if it just makes me uncomfortable, I, I either won't sing it or yeah. change the lyrics if, if, yeah. if, that, if people allow. Um, uh, and sometimes um, that's just, you know, certain songs, but then others don't make me feel uncomfortable. So I just try and just go with my own intuition, you know, and my own gut and, and just be true to that, my own gut feeling. Um, yeah. But uh, there, there are tunes that I've changed lyrics to, to, you know, to maybe modernize them. Um, black coffee. I, I changed some of the yeah. words on that, but but then um, I really really enjoy too. Um, for example, in some of the speakeasy um, era tunes that I do, there's definitely a theatrical yeah. element to that. Um, entering into yeah. you know a certain um, era and time that yeah. I really enjoy, um, and so um, that aspect of, of being a singer is, yeah, is definitely there this, for me as well. Yeah, uh, Great Gatsby type stuff, yeah, that's a little bit like that, or even wear a costume. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've done quite a few. You, you um, enter into a different with that. Whole. And I really enjoy that, I think, the kind of, you know, acting aspect of singing is, is definitely something I enjoy mm. utilizing. I had a, um, used to have these discussions with my friend Don Hesterberg, who played the drums, at, and we'd be uh, talk about what's the direction of jazz? Is jazz dead, or is it? Is what's, and we'd talk about. Um, we might have. I might have said this to you before of, uh, about. Um, we came up with the idea that a lot of contemporary jazz was historical reenactment, like you you dress up as, uh, you know, historically you dressed up as like a, uh, you know, with muskets and you reenact a Revolutionary War or something like that, and a lot of. Um, Jazz music, uh, so-called jazz music in America, has has uh, acquired that aspect. Where we're and uh, do you think there's a place for that, or is there? A, is it a? Do you try to? Uh, I don't feel that when I hear you sing. I don't feel like you're you put your own emotional self in, into these things. But is that something you try to look out for or think about? Think about it all. I try to no. discern whatever this song requires of me. I think mm. sometimes um, you mm. need to do what Billie Holiday was so famous for and interpret it in your own way, you know, yeah. and present it in your own way. And mm. then other times there's just such a strong identity of a tune that it's like you're entering into its, mm. um, its yeah. persona, you know. So I think it just takes discernment to, Good for you. to decide answer. what's yeah. this song requiring of me. Yeah. That's kind of how I, I, I feel about it too. Some songs, um, like you say, well, I know this is a song from the 1930s, so if you do it in a style from tomorrow, it's, it doesn't, it's gonna not really work. Right. And it's like taking your hat off to yes. this, uh, you know, just to, to, to salute them for their achievement and, exactly. you know, yes. and I think that, that's okay. But emotionally, it seems like uh, there's, you can always push, push the envelope a little bit. I had more, uh, again, it's a different kind of a thought that, uh, this is the kind of thing I, I think about, and I think uh, since we've, we've chatted about this before, I, I know you, you do as well, and it's, it's uh, like sort of the philosophy or the spiritual element and that's behind, perhaps it's behind, can be thought of as being behind music. And we, uh, we can't think without uh, using words. And, uh, but we can, uh, when we think about what the nature of music is, you get five pages of the, you know, the song you were talking about. Uh, there are no words, but you, you go from page one to page two, and you, here's a, a crescendo, and here's a retardendo, and there's um, this whole, uh, they're non-conceptual thoughts. that have nothing to do with, uh, if you think about, and if you think about any concepts, you're, you're not gonna play or sing very well. So I guess uh, what I guess I I had maybe a lot of years of playing and never thought about that at all, and then I I realized that that was kind of true that that uh, you can worry you might have a problem in your life that you can't solve but you keep thinking about it, and then if you go and play um, if you're working on that I don't know that Bach prelude that you're trying to memorize so that. Uh, a jazz song by Charlie Parker that takes so much dexterity 
um, then you, you don't have time to think about whatever your life problem is. Mm -hmm. And I, I wonder, friend, when I realized that, I realized that oh, that's one of the reasons that I practice. And it's, uh, and it's, it's uh, I wondered if, if, am I the only one that ever thought that? Have you heard, have you thought things like that also? Or had discussions with other musicians about that? You know? I, th I think I understand what, what you're asking. Yeah. Um, Good. <laughs> and, and I, I think I can share something that hopefully will, will address it. Um, this year, uh, I went through some, some painful things. And yeah. I wasn't sure if I should be singing at that time, if I should be making music at that time. Um, mm. And maybe I should step away and take some time off. Um, mm. and, but actually, I decided that through making music and singing, it felt as if the music began to process in me things that I could never really process That's in any other yeah. way. It was like um, the music mm. began to access and heal things in me, in my mind, in my heart that, that I really could never do any other way mm. or on my own. And so, um, is that kind of what you're asking? That's is, even is better than what I. That's a that's a great uh, answer and a great thing to happen. Mm. You know, that's a, a, to, you, you sort of you discover the answer by experience. Yes. yes. You know, rather than thinking, oh, I heard that this will work, I'll try it. You know, it's the other way around. The, you know, you found, you just looked at it and discovered it. Yeah, you know, that that is kind of, um, I guess, what I'm what I'm thinking. Uh, along the same line, and maybe is. Um, it's just, just digging a little deeper into the same idea that um, if you have this idea of, of conceptual thinking and non-conceptual thinking, and if it's like in, in meditation, if you uh, stop your, uh, your random thoughts and you, uh, you uh, in music, you, you stop your random thoughts and, there's, and you have music, and you, it connects you to uh, like an underlying existence that, that might be uh, like a a closer source um, to creativity, and so I'm, I'm um, in my own uh, thoughts. I haven't figured this out, but I'm. It's important to me, and as so I'm, uh, I'm trying to trying to get in touch with a deeper level. I think is um, music can be uh, can be used for many things. It can be a, a healing instrument. It can be a way to communicate with uh, people that telepathically. And it could be it could be so many things that I haven't thought of yet. And I'm, I'm uh, is this a, a topic that do you have some answers there? Do you think about those questions, or do you want to think more about those questions? I think um, I think this raises um, yeah. yeah definitely raises some interesting points for me. Is when you talk about having concepts, these preconceived yeah. concepts as you approach, you know, maybe a gig or something. Um, yeah. I think that actually can be what we don't realize is an agenda that we have, that we're bringing. And, yeah. and sometimes those can be um, great, but sometimes there can be something even better than that. And I personally have found um, that in letting go of my own agenda, what I want the performance to be or want the evening to be, yeah. that's when the most special moments happen. Um, mm -hmm. I am a very spiritual person. And um, I personally feel that in the moments when I feel the closest to my spiritual expression are in those times when I let go of that agenda and step into more creative freedom. And I think uh, some of the most special moments for me have been you know, within a performance with a group of people where we are um, completely yeah. away from the form of the music and now we're creating something right. brand new and the amount of trust that it requires for all of us and, and it bringing mm. us together, that those to me are the most, the, the times when I connect with my spirituality the most and, and feel like the music is now becoming mm. this wonderful expression of that. And I, I love that because jazz is so, so much based on creative freedom mm. that really everyone is bringing their own um, spiritual expression mm. to you know the table and we can express it together and and you know connect and, and feel navigate yeah. our way through together so yeah. I, I think you're right i think music can be used for so many things um but personally as a very spiritual person i i do 
absolutely um, feel like it's a, a channel for me, you know, a way that I can channel my own spirituality. No, that's great. I, I do too. I, I feel that way increasingly. You know, I don't always feel that way. Maybe a last question is, is that coming out of that about um, since you you know you feel sort of as I do that the, the spiritual element is um, you want to pay attention to it and how does how do we do it? Um, there's um, sometimes the songs that you find yourself singing because somebody wants you to sing them or uh, they don't have anything spiritual in a superficial way. There's nothing spiritual about them. <clears throat> Their American music is. Um, traditionally and essentially commercial and, and entertainment. And it's, it's, uh, there's been a movement, I would think, in the last period of time away from that. And, and maybe an, an, op an opposite way to think about it is, uh, we were talking about this before, about Indian classical music. is uh, very uh, consciously uh, tries to unite the uh, individual with a, a, a larger spiritual reality or to make them uh, increase their conscious awareness, expand their self. And uh, in music, uh, so we think, how do we, how do, we do it? And so uh, I have some you know, tentative ideas, but I wondered if, uh, like if you would like to be more spiritual in music, or you, you are, but how, do, how do, uh, does it just express itself and you don't need to think about it? Or what do you think? <laughs> I think, um, how do we become more creative, more expressive in music? I think it comes down to a personal level. I know that I personally um, spend a great deal of time thinking about how can I become more aware and sensitive, um, not just when I'm singing or yeah. making music, but in my life. So it's more yeah. of a, a trying to build a lifestyle in a way yeah. that facilitates becoming someone who is yeah. more present in the moment more aware of what's going on around me. And then I think that just overflows into music where you can um, kind of live and exist in this, in this space that um, you're more sensitive and, and hopefully um, able to be more fluid with what, what spiritually you feel going on in the music. I'm glad I asked, that's a good answer. Yeah, um, uh, that's wonderful. The, that's, I, I, I believe you too. That's the, uh, maybe, a, if, do you think, uh, maybe the last, very last question uh, is, um, uh, is maybe it's the idea that we, it's hard to say uh, where, what spiritual is and what's, uh, what's not. And maybe through, uh, uh, through the very thing we say, things are of this world and not of this world. And you think that somebody, uh, if, uh, sometimes in music, it's very base. Like it, it, the subject matter is, uh, you know, love and sorrow, and loss and coming of age and sexuality. And uh, do you think that there's any uh, any contradiction? I mean, you can sing those songs uh, without. Uh, you can sing those songs in a, in, a, in a spiritual way. Or is there any difference? A dumb question. Yeah. Could I sing them in a yeah. spiritual way? Absolutely. I think. Um, kind of going off the back of the last question, I think that um, really um, you can take anything, I think, and make it um, yeah. something else. You could take um, something that's a tune completely not spiritual and make it spiritual. Yeah. As I mentioned, Billie Holiday, she was so famous yeah. for doing that, for taking a song and, make, and presenting it in a way that no one could ever have conceptualized. The, the way she would sing this lyric or present that was just so brand new. Yeah. So, so I completely agree. I think that it doesn't yeah. have to be a hymn. It doesn't have to be a, you know, yeah. a, a, any kind of spiritual um, words um, in, the, in the song. But that you could you could take anything and, and make it spiritual if you if yeah. you want to. Great answer. I agree with you. I think it's like I think of some of the like so what did John Coltrane played a uh, inchworm, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then made it like a profound expression, yeah. you know, and we, we, we can't do it. Well, maybe I'll I'll uh, wind up the thing. We still wanted to do a, a couple of songs, so maybe uh, we'll. Uh, Pause and thank you for um, so graciously answering my my questions. Uh, I appreciate the uh, thoughtfulness and uh, sincerity of your uh, of your 
answers. Thank well, thank you. Thank you so yeah. much for having me. It's such thank a you, too, for recording us.